Başak Yabçan joins me now from Balıkesir in Turkey. She's a migration analyst at the Hugo Observatory at Liège University in Belgium. Good to have you on the program with us. A record 100 million people are now forcibly displaced around the world. How has the war in Ukraine made things worse for the overall refugee crisis? Well, in fact, it uh, created higher numbers around the world, and already there was an issue, there was a um, major challenge of burden sharing around the world as to who is going to be hosting these refugees, and it added to the numbers, obviously. Um, the good silver lining of the issue is that it did create a, a positive um, example uh, in European Union countries where, because the EU was part of the challenge, a part of this conflict, and it was taking place just at its border, uh, and also the public perception of the cultural similarity of the Ukrainian refugees, uh, European countries showed major solidarity, and actually, uh, they also showed that migration management, refugee reception is possible. Uh, it's not something to be that afraid of, and um, both civil society organizations and public institutions have been responding very quickly uh, and in a very coordinated way, uh, relatively, uh, around uh, Europe. And hopefully, uh, this will create an example uh, for other groups who have been waiting uh, asylum for asylum and seeking asylum around the world, and especially at the borders of Europe or within European Union countries. What's the reality for many of these refugees, and it does, depend, does it depend on where they end up? For example, Turkey hosting more refugees than anywhere else in the world, but then uh, the UK, for example, is looking to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda. Uh, absolutely. It does depend on where they end up. And uh, still, uh, many of the refugee hosting countries around the world, such as Lebanon or Jordan, or in many countries in Africa are not signatories of the Geneva Convention, which means that uh, the people who are forcibly displaced and end up there, who would be refugees elsewhere, will not have that legal right in these countries. Uh, so, but the same refugee who ends up, say, in Germany, would uh, acquire this refugee status and end up with uh, more social uh, rights and uh, a better integration into the society. Uh, the more challenging issue now is, as you mentioned, that many countries are trying to further externalize uh, this refugee conflict uh, by uh, putting these uh, asylum seekers in other destinations, in other safe, so-called safe countries, uh, while their case is being uh, heard by courts. This is a major violation of human rights because these people are trying really hard to reach at these destinations. Uh, which shouldn't be the case under normal circumstances, and the resettlement from uh, first countries of destination, first um, countries of asylum should be a lot easier, uh, but it's not the case. So these people are you know, taking uh, very arduous roads, dangerous uh, trips, journeys, in order to reach the, these destinations, and then they are placed in a safe country, uh, which uh, has uh, historically been... Um, a source of refugees because of the uh, genocide that took place there. Mm -hmm. I just want to go back to that number of a record 100 million people who are displaced worldwide. I mean, it's just mind-boggling to think about that. And, and like, what needs to be done? What can be done? There's just so many people who uh, don't have homes to go back to. Um, first of all, uh, I think that's a great question, but that's a question that we're all tackling to answer. Uh, and there are major um, political reasons why we cannot uh, actually reach at a solution. Uh, number one thing that needs to be done is, of course, ending conflict in these source countries or preventing further conflict in the con in other destinations. As you can see, uh, we cannot do that uh, for as long as uh, mankind has existed. And uh, the second thing we need to do, obviously, once refugees start uh, emerging, once these countries become uh, very insecure and people start to escape internationally, uh, we need to create, uh, of course, safe arrivals for these people, and that is also something we fail at doing. Currently, 85% of the world refugees are being hosted by other developing countries, even though this has been framed as a challenge for uh, developed it's actually developing countries who are struggling with their own issues of development hosting these refugees. So definitely those countries should be supported. 
uh, both financially, politically, but also uh, in terms of the know-how as to how to deal with the situation. The third one is the issue of resettlement. These refugees need to be resettled in other countries, in more developed countries, in the countries that are signatories of the Geneva Convention. There is a reason why we have a Geneva Convention, and there is a reason why these countries signed this convention. What is the point of not resettling anyone or resettling symbolic numbers of people, like 20 people per year, as right. um, the high number of countries are doing, unfortunately, um, if you are not going to really commit to your... Okay. Um, uh, honor your commitment. Okay. So uh, resettlement is a major problem. A lot of these refugees end up in a limbo situation. They okay. are not acquiring the refugee status. They're not right. getting protection. The kids are not being enrolled in school, etc. Okay. Yeah, I hate to cut you off, but we're running a bit short on time. Bashak Yavchan, thank you so much for your time today.